Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com and I love layer groups. I think they are a amazing tool for digital painters and they're often overlooked. So in this mini series, let's take a look at why they're so great. First up, group masks. So I've got a number of similar objects here. All of these spheres are sitting on top of the background, which is a flat illustration. So you can see these are all individual layers and then I have a background. What I might want to do is clone a few of these. I'm not sure exactly what they are in this illustration, but you know, you sometimes just have a lot of repeated shapes. Well, in this scenario, I actually want these trees to be in front of them to sort of cover them up. This is an awesome opportunity for a layer group. So the first step is just to select all these layers and then to make a new group. And as you know, this means you can move them together, but that's not what we're going to focus on this time. Instead, we are going to work on that mask. Now, ahead of time, I created a alpha channel, which is really just a fancy way of saying a saved selection. There are a lot of different ways to make a selection, but that's not the important part of this video. So I make the selection, and I think, okay, what do I want to do with that selection? What I want to do is have the group display everywhere except for on the trees. So in the context of a group mask, what I want to do actually is invert the selection. So right now it's selecting the trees. I want to control shift I to select everything but the trees. And then I apply a mask. Cool. So immediately you can see there are overlaps now and it looks like the trees are in front. In reality, the balls are in front. They're just being slightly covered up by this mask. Remember the trees actually on that flat background layer. Now this is really nice because I have one group with a single mask and yet all of the individual layers inside of that group benefit from it. And anytime you can do this, you want to, this is a huge time savings. Also, it sets up a relationship that allows you to make changes much more easily. It is not uncommon, for instance, to, I don't know, add another foreground element. So for a minute, I'm just going to hide all the foreground stuff and I'm just going to paint a tree here. So I'll just do a big visible shape just so we can see it really well. Okay. Not beautiful, but it will do the trick. So the first thing I want to do is to make that selection. And I'm actually going to go to my alpha channel. Remember I said I had a, a single selection that was saved for my foreground. Well, I'm just going to use levels here and add that as white to my selection just because this is the shape of the trees. So now I can control click on the shape of the trees or you can select it in any other way you want. And now I'm just going to update the mask on my layer group. So I click on that layer thumbnail. I can make it visible just so you can see what's going on. And remember black means hidden. So now that I'm painting in the layer thumbnail, I paint with black and I fill in the area of this new tree. Okay. Paint it everywhere. Nice. Just to double check, I can hold down alt shift and click on the layer thumbnail and you can see this is the new mask. So it does include the new tree. Cool. I can flatten down that painting now straight onto my background. So I've just got the one background layer and then the group full of all these balls. So then I can begin duplicating once again, and they all benefit from that new part of the mask. So what I've done here is I've created a relationship. Instead of doing a bunch of stuff to each individual layer, I've realized that these balls are all similar in some respect. They are similar in that they're all sort of floating in this middle ground area, and they all should be not overlapping the foreground trees. And so anytime you can think of some combination of like elements that all want to have something new applied to them, a layer group is an awesome way to go. The mask is really just the tip of the iceberg. So in this mini series, I'm going to show you a variety of other awesome benefits that this group is going to give us. But if you've never made a mask on a group, I encourage you to try that out and then stay tuned and I'll show you some other awesome things that are possible. See you in the next video.